Hello folks, so the next thing that I want to add into this game is some platforms for this player to jump on. Now the platform images that I'm going to use are going to be this one here, just a piece of wood. Now the image itself, just like the others so far, is stored within this assets folder which is just next to my code. So in your case you're not going to have all these different pi files, you will just have your main code. But next to it will be a folder called assets, or you may have needed something else, and then the images inside it. So first of all, before I create this platform, let's load that image in. Now I've got the section here for loading images and I've got my player image, the background image. Underneath that, I will load in this, uh, this platform. I'll say platform underscore image equals just the same as before, pygame.image.load. Then the folder that it's in, so in my case, it's called assets forward slash wood.png, which is the name of the file here. And then lastly, at the end, at dot convert underscore alpha. Now with the image loaded in, I can start creating the class. I'm going to do it in the same way as I did the player class. The only difference here is that because I'm going to have multiple platforms at a time, I find it easier to work with sprite classes instead. So this is just Pygame's built-in support for sprites, and it just adds a little bit more functionality. So it starts off in the same way. I'll say class platform. And in fact, I'll add a little comment to say platform class. I know it's a little self-explanatory, but I like to comment the code when I can. Now in the player class, I didn't add anything within the brackets. In this case, however, because I am going to be using sprite classes, I need to add that in so that it can inherit from them. So in here, I put pygame.sprite.sprite. The second sprite starts with a capital S. Then afterwards, I start off as before with my constructor. So this is my init method, it takes the self argument, then X and Y, which is where my platforms are going to be positioned, and then a width. Now the first line within this constructor needs to call the init method from the sprite class. So here I say pygame.sprite.sprite, so just the same as above, dot init. So I call the init method from it and just put in self in the brackets. So that's all I need to do to call this. The rest of the code is going to be pretty much the same way as I've done it before. I'm just going to assign a bunch of variables. Uh, the first one I want is my image. I can say self.image equals. And now I've loaded in that wood image. However, I want to resize it. So I'm going to have to use pygame.transform.scale. What I'm scaling is the platform underscore image. And the size is going to be, well, I've got this width variable. So this is what's going to determine how wide each platform is going to be. It just adds a little bit more randomness to the game. So you could end up with small or big platforms. So the first argument or the first variable will be my width. And then the second variable, I'm just going to set all the platforms to be 10 pixels tall. So that one's defined and fixed. Next thing I need to do is generate a rectangle from this. So I can say self.rect equals self.image.get underscore rect and this will generate a rectangle from this. Now because this picture is already uh, pretty much the shape of a rectangle I don't have to worry about manually assigning a rectangle to it like I did with the player class. So this is going to work just fine. Now the next thing is to assign coordinates. self.rect.x is equal to this x argument and then I'll do the same for the y. So this one is x. Hmm and self.rec.y is equal to y. So that's all of my variables assigned so far. I've got the constructor set up, uh, but of course I'm not calling this class yet. I'm not creating any instances of it. So let's generate a bunch of platforms onto the screen. So I'll create a bunch of instances for now. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is create a variable that's gonna control how many of these platforms I can have at a time because really I'm gonna have an infinite number of them. They're gonna keep regenerating, uh, but of course I can't create an infinite number of platforms. So I'll, have, I'll come up here into my game variables section and say max underscore platforms is equal to 10. So that gives me a decent enough number that they're gonna be hidden off the screen, but there's gonna be a constant stream of them coming in because as soon as one platform goes off the bottom of the screen, I'll get another one created above it. So come back down here. Now underneath where I've got my platform class, I've got this section here where I'm gonna be creating my instances. So in fact, I'll add a little comment to this one, which I didn't last time. So this was my player instance. Now I can start creating my platform instances. However, because I'm going to be creating a whole bunch of platforms, I need a way of storing them all together. 
Now, typically I would be using a Python list. If I was making a whole bunch of individual items, I would add them to a list. But because I'm working with sprites, I can work with, or I can use Pygames groups. It works more or less in the same way uh, as a list, but it just gives me a little bit more functionality. So I'll add a comment here, say create sprite groups. And the one that I need for now is my platform underscore group. I will say this is equal to pygame.sprite dot group. Now this time it's group with a capital G. So again, it will operate more or less in the same way as a list. So what I can do now is say create temporary platforms. These are temporary here because within the actual game when I'm going to be creating them properly, I will just have a section within the while loop that's constantly generating platforms for me. But for now, I'm just going to start off with, well, those initial 10. So to do that, I will have a for loop. I will say for p in range max underscore platforms. So this will count from zero up to, but not including 10. I want to iterate through and create a bunch of platforms myself. Now to create them, I will just call this class here. And I can say platform equals an instance of the platform class, which is the one with the capital P. And then I just need to start giving it the, the arguments that it is asking for. All it needs is X, Y, and width. Well, remember, I do want some element of randomization here. So I don't want to manually enter X, Y coordinates and a width for each of these platforms that I'm about to create because all of that is happening within a loop. I want to automate it. So to randomize it, I need to load in another module, or rather I need to import it. I'll go all the way back up to the top where I've got my libraries being imported. And underneath Pygame, I will type import random. Now this is a Python module or Python library, and this is going to allow me to call various different randomized methods. Now if I go back down to where I'm creating my instances down here, I can now start randomizing my X and Y coordinates. So before I actually create this instance, I need to create some random numbers. Now the first thing I want is a width. So let's say p underscore w, so a platform width, is random dot, so I call the name of the module first, and then the function or the method. The one I want is, well, I need a random integer here. So it's going to be rand int, and my width is going to be in the range of 40 to 60 pixels. So we'll say between 40 and 60. You can play around with these numbers, uh, but this just gives me a, a decent range on the platforms. Next thing I want to do is say, what the x coordinate is going to be. So p underscore x is also going to be a random integer. So it's going to be random dot rand int. And here I need to define my limits. So I don't want these platforms to be generated off the screen. So the, f the leftmost coordinate, for the x coordinate anyway, is going to be zero. I don't want the platforms to be in a negative value. On the right hand side, you could say screen width, because that's going to mean that I can generate a platform anywhere within that that range from zero all the way to the other side, from the left hand to the right hand side of the screen. However, remember, this px variable, when it feeds into this argument here, is actually the x coordinate of the rectangle, which is the top left corner. So I could end up with a situation where my x coordinate is my screen width, but then that's just where the rectangle will start. It will also have its own width to the right, in which case it will go off the side of the screen. So I need to limit that so I'll say here, screen width minus P underscore W. So that the furthest over to the right that these can start is still going to be limited by the width. Now the last one is my Y coordinate, P underscore Y. And again, this is going to be random dot rand int. And this is going to be between 80 and 120. So what I'm defining here is not the Y coordinate for each individual platform. What I actually want to do is space them all apart by a certain value. And that value is between 80 to 120 pixels between each platform. So that means that I need to know where the last platform was when I created it. Well, here I can just use this variable. So P is going to be increasing with each iteration. That means that I can move each of the platforms up by that amount. So I shouldn't simply be able to multiply this out. I can say P multiplied by this random variable. And as this increases, it's going to generate these platforms at a multiple of these locations. Now with all of these defined, I can finally create my platform. So now I've got these numbers in here. I can just say my X coordinate is P underscore X, Y is P underscore Y. And lastly, the width is P underscore W. 
But once the platform is created, I need to add it into my group. So with a list, I would typically say platform underscore group dot append, or it would be a list dot append. With a group, you just say dot add. And what I'm adding into here is that platform. So at each iteration, it's going to create a new platform, add it to the group, and then move on and do the same thing over and over. So when this loop is finished running, I'm going to have a whole bunch of platforms generated from it. So this is fine, but it's not actually going to display anything onto the screen. I'm going to run the code just to make sure I've not got any errors and it's executed everything fine. I've not got any errors. So I know that the platforms are created and they're within this group, but I'm not calling any draw methods. Now I don't have a draw method within my platform class like I did with the players class. However, because I'm using these sprite classes, I don't need to define a draw method. It already is included within this. So this platform group is going to have its own draw method automatically generated. I can go back into my game loop here and let's see where I want to put this. So I've got the section here for drawing sprites. Just before I draw the player, I will call my player, uh, my platform group group. And I can just say dot draw and give it the argument of screen, which is my game window. Now, if I run this code, I'm going to end up with a whole bunch of platforms coming up on the screen. Now notice that I didn't actually define a draw method. They just existed automatically. And this is just one of those features that I mentioned when I said that importing from uh, importing the um, or rather inheriting from the sprite class just helps with some of the functionality. So the other thing you notice is all of these are randomly generated each time. So each time I run this, the platforms end up in different positions. Now it's not perfect. Some of them are a little bit too far apart. Some of them are a little bit too close together. So there is definitely some improvement uh, that can be done here. But when I do generate them automatically within the game loop, they come out a lot smoother than this. So this is just a temporary thing that I can use to get them up and running. Now, the next thing that I want to do now that I've actually got these platforms generated is allow the player to jump on the platforms instead of the bottom of the screen. Adding that in should be fairly straightforward because I've kind of done the code already. I just need to adjust it a little bit so that it's now checking for platforms rather than the underside of the screen. So we go back to the player class and the move method and I'll come down to where I've got this collision uh, check at the moment. So now I will keep this in just temporarily so that I can still bounce off the bottom of the screen. But above it, I will add the actual collision that I want to do. So this is going to have a comment to say, check collision with platforms. And to check the collision with these, I'm going to have to look at each individual platform one by one. So I can iterate through that platform group. I can say for platform in platform group, add a comment here to say collision in the y direction. I'm not interested in collision in the x direction because the way this is going to work is that the player can jump through the platform. There's no collision on the way up. The collision only happens when you're bouncing back down and you jump off it. So x and y co collision doesn't matter here. I'm only interested in y collision. So to do this, I carry out a, a rectangle collision check. So I've got a rectangle for the platforms and I've got a rectangle for my player, which I've manually adjusted to kind of fit the size of them fairly accurately. That means I can compare those two rectangles together. So this platform here is going to have its own rectangle. So I'll say platform dot rect. So I'm calling the rectangle of that platform. And then I'm going to call the collide rect method. So this is just saying, check whether this rectangle here, which is going to be my each individual platform one by one, check whether this has collided with another rectangle. So the other rectangle is going to be uh, this one right here. It's going to be the player's rectangle. So what I could do is just put in self.rect in here, and that's going to check for collision. However, remember the way I've set up my dx and dy variables are that I propose to move the player first, then I do all my collision checks to make sure that there's nothing going wrong, and only after that do I actually update the rectangle. So at this point, the player won't have moved yet. So what I actually need to be doing is projecting where the player is going to be moving, just like I did with my left and right using the DX variable. I need to do the same thing with the DY variable and then check for collision with that position. So if I go back up to my, uh, my sketch here, I can kind of explain what's going on. So I've got the player here and the player is going to have his own rectangle. Oh, I definitely don't want it filled. And 
Uh, let's change that. There, so the player's got his rectangle and the platform also has a rectangle. So what I want to be doing is checking not for collision with this current rectangle, but I want to say my dy variable is moving me up or down. So I want to create a new rectangle from that dy variable. So I'm going to say that my player is actually going to be moving up by, uh, say, 10 pixels. So this is going to be the new rectangle of the player in the next iteration. So I want to check for collision within this. And to do that, I create a temporary rectangle within here. So I'll take the coordinates of my existing rectangle, so self.rect.x and self.rect.y, and then I add on the dy variable to it. Now this still needs a width and a height. So if I come back up here, remember I've defined self-width and self-height for the rectangle. So I can feed this in as additional arguments. Self.width and self.height. So if I have a collision detected, I need to first of all see which side of the rectangle or which side of this platform I'm at. Because if I'm coming in from the bottom, then it doesn't really matter. I don't want any collision uh, to, to occur or I don't want anything happening from it. But if I'm coming in from the top, then I do want it to be able to bounce off. So first of all, that's what I need to check. And to do that, I'm going to just say check if above the platform. So I can compare the rectangles bottom position, so if self.rect.bottom, which is the underside of the player's rectangle, if that is less than platform.rect.center y, so if the bottom of my player, so this side here, if that is less than, which in, in Pygame is going to mean it's above here because the y coordinate decreases up the way, so if the underside is above the center line, then that means that the player is above the platform when the collision has occurred. So if that's the case, I want to be able to jump. But before I do that, I want to know, is he jumping or is he falling at this point? I only want him to be able to bounce if he's currently falling onto the platform. And that's going to be determined by my self.vel variable. If he's falling, then that means the gravity is pushing him down. That means that this variable is positive. So if self.vel underscore y is greater than zero, that means he's falling. If it's a negative number, remember that's what happens when you initially hit the ground and you bounce, the variable becomes negative and that means he's moving up the way. So if it's a positive variable, it means he's falling down. So if he does, then I just copy this that I've got here and just put it back in here. Exactly the same thing is going to happen. I'm going to set my dy variable to zero and I'm going to set my initial velocity back up to a negative number so he jumps back up. But there is one more thing that I want to do here just to avoid any clipping. So I'm saying that if the rectangle's bottom is above the platform center, but I have got a collision, then this code is run. Well, if I have a collision, then that means that the rectangles are overlapping each other, and I don't really want to show that. So what I want to actually do is position manually. Uh, well, I suppose it'll be coming in from above. So I want to position the rectangle so that it matches up with the platform. So then I can say in here that the bottom of my rectangle is going to be equal to platform.reg.top. So essentially, I'm just putting the player's rectangle directly on top of the platform's rectangle. Okay, so that was a lot of typing without any demonstration. So let's run this code, and straight away I get an error because I've mistyped width. So let's just fix this, run that again. Okay, and it's working, I think. So if I jump along here, I can now start bouncing along the platforms. So you can see it is actually starting to work straight away. I can fall all the way back down now. And at the moment, because I still have this collision with the bottom of the screen, he's still being able to jump up and down. In reality, if you fall back down here, it's going to be a game over condition. But I can start working my way back up again. So that's my platforms now being generated and I've got collision working with them. Now at the moment, they're not moving and uh, I don't really have any scrolling working just yet but I'm gonna add that in in a future video. So for now, if you found this useful, then please leave a like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.